cloud. Hi, Clive. Thank you for agreeing to be the member who's interviewed for the, the South African TA Association's newsletter this quarter. Um, I'm really looking forward to spending some time with you, hearing about you and TA, because this is what we're all about at the SATAA. So tell me a little bit about yourself, yeah. your work. Um, cool, yeah. So um, thank you for the opportunity. It's really cool to chat to you. Um, so I run a small media and training consultancy. The bulk of my career has been spent in media and entertainment. Um, and then about four years ago, I ventured out into the training world um, and headed into corporate training, which is where I, I came across TA. Um, and so spent the last four years in, in, um, in the training space. And beginning of this year, decided to head out on my own. So I've got a small little consultancy where I'm doing some media consulting and doing some training work. Um, and some coaching um, and seeing where it goes from here. So it's all kind of new ground for me. Exciting. It sounds like one thing has emerged from the next and yeah, this is a brand new um, part Absolutely. of your, your... Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, it is a oh, part of oh. life, I suppose. You have to go with the waves. And so I'm kind yeah. of riding what feels like a very good wave at the moment. <laughs> so you mentioned that you met TA in, in the training context. Say a little bit more about how you first met it and what was it that grabbed you? Because you stayed with it. Sure, yeah. So when I was working um, in media, a, a company and I started courting each other, as I like to put it. We, we started showing an interest in each other um, and me as a trainer and them in terms of what they were training. Um, and what the company did was the company um, was started by a, a bunch of psychologists who were operating in the, the therapy room and decided that what they would do was take the therapy room to the corporate space because they were finding that the same kind of people were entering into the um, were entering into their therapy room and they were finding there was a lot of people especially around call center spaces they were finding that there was a lot of stress and anxiety that was being caused there so they they decided they were and uh, they were going to to open up this this um, training company and um, their first module that they created was something called the psychology of connection. And part of the psychology of connection um, speaks about Eric Byrne and spoke about, it mostly focuses on transactional analysis um, and then takes the, the delegate through an egogram as well. And then uses transactional analysis to, so it was interesting what they did with transactional analysis. So it wasn't, uh, it was, it was a slightly watered down version, I think, of transactional analysis than what we would have experienced in the TA 101s, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but what it did was it, it, you, you go into the call center space, for example, and you teach people how to talk someone down from an angry position or from being either, you know, in a, adaptive state within a state of helplessness um, or being scared on the phone where they don't know what's going on. And by using, they believe in the power of the nurturing parent to get that person to guide them into adult so that you're able to, and basically how you can use transaction analysis to control the transactions so that you can control the conversation in the way that you want. Whereas call center agents are often just badgered around and screamed at and yelled at. And we use transactional analysis really to teach them that they could get people to a place of being an adult if they were accessing the appropriate ego state at the appropriate time. And that was incredibly powerful. And I, I thought when I first started seeing it, I, that we were courting each other and I was watching them train this. And I thought, oh, you know, this is, you know, pop psychology 101 all over again. Then I started training it. And I would sit with the call center agents and we would talk through the interactions. And I just saw a shift in them from how they were managing the calls to how they were managing afterwards and the managers, um, how they were managing their teams just by this introduction of transactional analysis and the understanding that they could manage the transactions between each other better and operate from a space of adult, actually understanding what the adult is. Yeah. And I found that incredibly powerful. It was life-changing for me when I, I see, you know, having to train it and at the same time it, having it emerge in my life where it was suddenly this the epiphany that I was having. So that made me incredibly excited. So then when I found out about the TA 101 course, it's been a kind of natural progression for me to get more and more involved. So that's lovely. I mean, I think that's what, what, what brings TA alive. It's not just uh, spouting theory at people and knowing all the theories and using all of them. It's taking even just one piece of TA theory 
like ego states and transactions yeah. and making it relevant for a, a context. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's so well received. I mean, transactional analysis, which uh, I was also very interested by, is very well respected in the corporate space. Hmm. It is something where when you say that you train or coach in transactional analysis, there was a level of respect that came with it too. So I was very pleased. That's what's also made me think career-wise, that yeah. it's something I want to invest in. Because I do think that there is, it is becoming more and more recognized um, and seen as something that can add value in terms of it's a theory that can be easily and well applied in exactly. the corporate space. And I think that's it. It's got an ease of access, hasn't it? Everybody gets it. Quite easily. I, always, I always used to say that it's, I'm training people on basic human 101, how yes. to just connect, yeah. how to just say to each other, how are we going to be in a space where we're both okay? You know, and it's as yeah. simple as that. And I was like, it's basic. I, I can't believe I'm being paid money to, to train people on what really felt very, you know, kind of should be intrinsic. Sure. <laughs> but it's something that I suppose we've lost touch of in terms yeah. of as yeah. we become less human in the workspace and, and you know kind of focusing on speed and social media and things like that and i think people often say after they've done a ta1 like this isn't new i know this stuff because i've lived yeah. it but now i've got a framework to make sense of it so yeah that was also I, what's very powerful about tas i think it gives you a language that's that you didn't have before of being able to speak within the, the frameworks give you a language where and it's almost a it's a cringe free framework you can go into a meeting and speak about adults you can speak about how the person was contaminated by child whatever it is and almost coach through that without it feeling like you you know you were in a bad space now you did a bad thing it gives a it gives a, 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 a language that's a bit more accessible i think and it feels a little less a lot less aggressive yeah, yeah, absolutely. Without any judgment, it's just a exactly. yes. tool to create awareness and then make some different yeah. choices. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm curious when you your your first immersion in TA was just one tiny part of TA, um, the ego states and transactions, and then in the TA one hundred and one you met the whole spectrum of TA yeah. theory and everything else. Uh, has anything shifted in the way you use TA since then? Sure. I think so. So I realized, you know, kind of how little I knew about TA. So obviously when I'd focused on ego states, that was, that was really where I thought EA, that, that TA lived yeah. was is that it's really about the ego gram and about shifting ego states, etc. But actually, um, and it's one of the things that I was thinking about in terms of when I was thinking like, what's my favorite part of TA? And this is what, mm -hmm. where I've, I've read the book. I, I'm okay, you're okay before. And, you know, I've kind of, at the time I thought, oh, you know, this is just silly pop psychology once again. But actually that was what the life positions was the one that opened my eyes the most, because I realized that, especially in the corporate training space, is so many managers walk in from a space of I'm okay, you're not okay. And so many call center agents specifically also walk in from a space of I'm not okay, you're okay, whether it be the client, whether it be the manager. And to coach managers to treat their people in a space of adult, in a space of they're actually okay as well, and also empower people who are workers and mm -hmm. seen as subordinates or whatever they're called in awful corporate settings, to actually teach them to say that actually you need to operate from a space that be, you're being okay. It's, yeah. You can actually see them kind of go, am I allowed to own that space? No. And that was very powerful for me. I'd never used it in my coaching and training before. And mm -hmm. I took after that, I took the life positions with me and I, I coached very, I coached from that space and it was very powerful. I, I saw significant aha moments from people realizing that they were operating from an incorrect life position. Yeah. And almost they didn't know anything else because that's the way they made a decision about who they were because of their past. Yeah. And now um, you're giving them permission that, hey, it doesn't have to be like that. That sense yeah. of l less than or better than and often better at, than covers up less than, as we know. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. And I'm not yeah. sure all the managers like me for telling, telling oh, this, okay. uh, that, you know, that now they're, their people could speak to them as if they were actually empowered. But it was, it is very powerful just to tell people that you don't have to believe the script that you're given. Absolutely. Um, that says, you know, your manager knows everything. You can yeah. actually have a discussion that says, I have value to add to. Mm, lovely. And it's very powerful. 
and it's well received i'm hearing in the work you're doing very well received yeah i mean we're making money out of transactional analysis wow. first so you know so thank you eric Byrne. um but also in terms of you know it is like i said it's something that people do respect and one of the the companies that that we trained um for example was um a set satellite navigation which finds out where your car is um, and we would go and train the installers of how to deal with when they arrived at clients houses using transactional analysis and that's how well received it was there was that even it was the guy who was going out and installing your tracking device was finding this eye-opening and life-changing in terms of how they dealt with people right through to exco's of blue chip corporates so it is very well received and across the board in terms yeah. of level. Isn't it amazing? It is well, amazing. Yeah. Definitely such different roles um, and yet it still makes sense. It goes back to what we we're saying. It's just so completely basic human, human exactly. connection. Exactly. So, yeah. so have you got aspirations of where you want to go with TA in the future in your business? So, yes. I, I, I'd like to, so I, I'd love to continue with the, with the courses that you run, um, Karen. And so I was hoping to do the one this year, but I, I'll d hop onto that next year so I'd, I'd love to just be more immersed in terms of education side of it and be able to learn more um, so I am developing material obviously uh, with running a training consultancy I need to sell some kind of product um, and so the the material that I'm working on is um, is managing as a coach and using the coaching principle coming from the transactional analysis perspective so I'm using a lot of that um, and then in the, the coaching work that I do on a, in a private capacity, so that coaching work that I do, I use a lot of the transactional analysis. I use the egogram. Um, I do find that it's a very powerful way of, of and judgment-free way of saying to people that per perhaps there's areas of your life where we can shift things around and it's, we're able to name those um, quite succinctly um, in transactional analysis. So that's really been my focus for now. So at the moment, I'm using mostly my coaching and the material that I'm developing. Mm, lovely. If, you, if you've got a last word to the, the SATA members who are going to be listening to this, uh, what might it be around life, business, work, family, TA? Gosh, something profound to end off with. Yes, um, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so for me, I, I think it, it goes back to what we're saying is, is that transactional analysis for me is so, is so powerful because it is so simple. And I think it's, we're in a privileged, I feel very privileged to know about TA because mm. it is one of those, um, it's, it's one of the theories, um, psychological theories that has really, Firstly, benefited me in business, benefited me in my personal life, benefited me in my marriage. Um, and I think what's so powerful is, is that as people who believe in transactional analysis, we can almost become evangelists of it. And that's what I've enjoyed is sharing um, the what, sharing the knowledge. And I've also loved, since I've become a part of the, the um, association, is how the transactional analysis is so keen to evolve mm -hmm. um, in a South African perspective, which I think is so incredibly powerful. And I think we have so much to offer in the South African context, but also to evolve as, as a theory in terms of how can we, how can we represent it and present it um, yes. in South Africa. Brilliant. And I think you've hit on something so key to TA. Um, some modalities keep, try to keep it pure and un sullied by anything over decades and exactly, TA has yeah. been like that and i think particularly in the developmental wing of ta that we, we're talking about it's um yeah how do we change the models how do we use different names how do we create new models so that yeah. we speaking to the context and, the, and making it relevant for our lived experience in south africa so yeah, I get excited when I hear you saying that. So. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think it's exactly right. I look forward to uh, what you bringing to the SATAA. You're a, um, a fairly new member, so uh, yeah, you, you're warmly welcome. And thank you. We've got a sense of you now as a as a person and as someone who's really embracing TA. So thanks for your time, Clive. Thank you. It, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Great. Thank you for chatting to me. I appreciate it. Excellent. Thanks. Okay.